take a look at this dead badger. The carcass is several days old, infested with maggots, with the stench of decaying flesh. Regular meals of rotting meat would poison most animals, but for scavengers such as vultures, this carcass is on the menu, and it's a meal they've been waiting for. Obligate scavengers are organisms that only eat dead animals. This strategy is rare in vertebrates. Most scavengers will hunt for prey if there aren't enough dead animals around, and many predators will also scavenge if given the chance. But obligate scavengers rely solely on decaying flesh for food. In vertebrates, this type of scavenging is only found in vultures. It isn't seen in any mammals or reptiles. And there are reasons for this. Firstly, for scavenging to evolve, there must be enough carrion around to be eaten. This depends on several factors, like the cause and place of animal deaths. Vertebrate scavengers eat very few carcasses that die from predation, because predators usually eat all their prey or guard them. As a result, most wait for animals to die from malnutrition, disease, exposure, parasites, or accidents. In the African savanna, only around 30% of all hoofed mammals die from predation. The rest die from natural causes, but not all carcasses are easy to get to. This is why the place of death is important too. Although larger animals die in the open, Smaller ones tend to die in burrows underground, or other places too difficult to access. Because of this, carrion availability can be unpredictable. Scavengers must also be able to outcompete the microorganisms and invertebrates that decompose dead animals. As microbes digest carcasses, they can produce toxic compounds, so a carcass becomes more useless over time. Vertebrate scavengers must find their food more quickly, or develop ways to overcome the toxins. Vultures, for example, have evolved incredibly acidic stomachs that allow them to eat rotting flesh without becoming sick. In 2014, a study found that these birds have large intestines covered in flesh-digesting bacteria. Clostridia and Fusobacteria dominate the microbiome of vultures. By allowing the microbes to break down carrion in their intestines, these birds could absorb more nutrients from the food they eat. It seems that after hundreds of years of eating contaminated meat, vultures have not only developed a strong resistance against toxins, but they may have also harnessed the power of killer bacteria. When it comes to dealing with these decomposers, strong adaptation is a must. It's this adaptive cost that sets the evolutionary price for scavenging as a survival strategy, limiting the evolution of this behaviour in most animals. So why has this behaviour only evolved in birds? Well, animals can die anywhere in an environment, so scavenging relies on moving efficiently over large areas and flying is perhaps the most efficient form of movement in vertebrates. Birds are best adapted for scavenging because they can soar in the sky. It takes far less energy to soar than to run, which means that birds can outcompete mammals and reptiles in finding and eating dead animals. This type of flight is essential for the evolution of obligate scavenging. For example, in Panama and Venezuela, when chickens were placed in forests, 97% were scavenged by turkey vultures within three days. In a similar study, the vultures found 63% of carcasses, whereas mammals only found 5%. Even hyenas kill the majority of their food, because for them, it'll always be better to have the flexibility of hunting and scavenging. But there is a catch to this in birds. 
There's a trade-off between a wing design for efficient gliding and one for rapid turning and flying. In order to maximise their gliding ability, vultures have sacrificed the manoeuvrability of flight, which is needed to catch live prey. This cost has limited the evolution of this behaviour in most birds. But vultures might not be the only exclusive scavengers to have ever existed, because soaring may have been around for a long time. Bird flight originated in the late Jurassic era, while vertebrate flight originated way back in the late Triassic, when pterosaurs ruled the skies. Certain groups of pterosaurs could reach enormous sizes, with large wingspans, so some of these extinct species could have only eaten carrion too. In fact, size is an important adaptation for obligate scavengers. Because carrion availability is so unpredictable, scavengers have adapted to survive for longer periods between meals. Selection has led to larger body sizes with higher fat reserves. The Andean condor, for example, is the largest living bird capable of flying weighing up to 15 kilograms. They could also use their size advantage to steal and monopolize carcasses from other scavengers. The fact that they are more opportunistic than obligate scavengers tells us that the benefits of sometimes eating carrion are larger than the adaptive costs of only eating carrion. But all types of scavengers play an important role in the food web. Dead animals can be dangerous to living animals because they can spread disease. Scavengers quickly remove them, and in the end, everyone in the ecosystem benefits.